Hello everyone, just want to give you an update on our schedule here at Christian Life Center. Uh, every Sunday morning we have an adult class for um, all of our men and women, and that class begins at 10.30. Uh, our service um, uh, following the adult class is at 11 o'clock. Uh, this is something that uh, we want everybody to be aware of, our classes. Uh, in addition, our Spanish class is at 10.15 every Sunday morning as well. Uh, simultaneously, our other classes are going on. And then, of course, everybody in all classes come together at 11 o'clock. So just want to make you aware of that so uh, everybody uh, knows what our schedule is and what's going on. Anyway, look forward to seeing you soon. God bless you. Bye-bye. Good morning. How are y'all? Yeah. Y'all are just moving farther back from me and farther back. Are y'all scared of me? You're afraid I'm going to call you up here and pray over you like I did at Mon last week? <laughs> You're like, maybe if I sit back there, she won't use me as an example. <laughs> uh, you should know me by now. I can walk and talk. <laughs> well, I can pretty much do anything and talk. Thank you, Brother Bill. <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, Colton has been videoing um, my um, lessons, so it's been actually kind of cool to see him put it together, and he's been like taking shots of the service interaction through the service and the baptisms with the message, so you're just not having to listen to me. Um, you can actually see what follows in the service after um, the Sunday school class, the adult class, and so... Um, I am not doing it because I want to be videoed so everybody can listen to me. That actually makes my stomach get all in knots. And I start stumbling over my words like, what was my thought? Oh no, I'm going to make a mess on the video. But I had had several people through the years, lots of people, asking for, wondering if this was recorded. So that's what that is doing that for. And I think it's kind of good. Um, that away with subjects in adult class, there may be something that someone is struggling with, or um, I know in the past with altar workers, which is what we're talking about right now, several people have said, you have lessons on altar work, um, or how to pray in the altar, pray with someone in the altar. So this way you've got kind of a base to go back to. And that's what we have been talking about in this series. Uh, my husband asked me this morning, well, how long do you think you're going to teach on the altar? And I said, until I feel like we're comfortable with it. Until God releases me and I notice a difference in us that we're not afraid of the altar. Until we realize that the altar is the most important thing in our life, in our churches. Um, I am absolutely amazed at how many people will come to me and say, Oh my gosh, this is the first time I have been called to the altar since I was a little girl. Someone said that to me last week and I thought, wow, that's crazy. And I know that they travel a lot and they go to a lot of churches. And I said, you mean there's never altar calls given? Not anymore. And I thought, wow, that just goes to show me why God has been laying it on my heart that we need to talk about the altar. Because the altar represents repentance. And repentance is saying, is saying I'm sorry. Well, that right there says all I need to know about the world that we live in about relationships, about jobs, about the crazy world that we are in right now. Think about this. How much of our world would be different if we learned to say, I'm sorry. Instead of, well, if you hadn't have done that, or if that hadn't have happened, I wouldn't have done that. We're all victims to what someone else did to us. And we refuse to say, I am the problem. Didi, you are the problem. You can change. You are a victim because you refuse to say, you know what? I'm a big girl now. I am a grown up. I don't have to act like a toddler anymore. I can get up and walk and I can do what's right. And I can be better. It's not my mama's fault. It's not my dad's fault. It's not my teacher's fault. It's not the kid's fault that bullied me in school or all the abuse that I went through. No. I can make the choice to change 
I can say, you know what? I am going to be different. I forgive them and I'm going to move on with my life. I'm going to build to be an altar. And all throughout scripture in the Old Testament, they built altars all the time. And that's where they sacrificed what they wanted and stuck it on the altar. We have problems in our relationships because we can't say, I'm sorry. We don't want to repent. We don't want to say, it's my fault. I did that. We expect out of everybody else what we don't hold ourselves accountable to. Someone told me at work this week, one of my associates, and it really hit me. She said, the things that aggravate you about someone else are your mirror. I said, wow. And, and it's funny because she went on to try to get you to do something else. I said, hold on a second. That'll preach. You just spoke to me. Hold on. So the things that aggravate me about my mom are things that I do. That I aggravate other people. So the things that you don't, things I don't like about Colton are probably more than likely the same things he don't like about me. Things I don't like about Kayla are probably the same things that Kayla don't like about me. So the what bothers you about other people, you need to look in the mirror and ask yourself, do I do that same thing that's driving me crazy about them to someone else? You're thinking, oh, I don't like the way that my husband treated me. I don't like that, what he just said or did. But wait a second. I just did the exact same thing to him two days ago. So it's okay for me to act that way, but it's not okay for him to act that way. Huh? You see, some of y'all are like, oh, what? Yes. So that's why the altar is so important. Why? Because the altar is sacrifice. It's where you lay down what you want and you say, God, make me into what you want. Now, I can look back on my life and I was thinking this morning, you got to this place and I'm studying. I'm like, what, what is it about? Why are you here? Why have you come this far without looking back? Why have you held true to the things that were taught to you when you were a child? Why are they such an integral part of you that you refuse to relinquish? And I guess there's a lot of things going on right now and y'all need to pray for this. Just a little side note. My dad I has, have, has some health issues right now um, and we do not know what it is. We just know that um, they are sending him to a lot of blood specialists and so I've been having to deal with that and I cannot talk about it. Um, I am that person that if there's something bad happening, I run. I'm not a good friend to have. <laughs> In emergencies because I just want to cry. I want to get at the altar. I'm not any help. I'm not going to be an encouragement to you. So if you're going through something and you are not seeing me or talking to me, it's because I don't know how to handle it. I just want to cry and be scared out of my mind. And that is me. And I have to go to the altar. So yeah, so I need you to pray for him. He, um, yeah, the doctor has been sending him to a lot of different, he's had a lot of blood work done. So it could be very serious. I think my dad knows more than he's telling me because he keeps talking about going home to heaven and I'm having fits because I've lived my whole life maybe I'll be able to come here and live with me. So I'm like, no, you're not going anywhere. But it's crazy how peaceful. But I was reminded, so this week I've had to, to put things out of my mind. I don't like it. I hate it when doctors say, well, all signs are pointing to this, but I need to send you more. I'm like, don't tell me what it's pointing to until you know for sure, because I'm going to go into meltdown. Like, how many days does he have? You know, that kind of thing, which is crazy. That's how he's talking, so it's making it worse. Um, yeah, I'm just going to get in my RV and just drive to some and go fishing and literally, because I'm going to be John the Baptist and grandma. I'm like, well, stop talking. No, you're going to be here for a long time. If I have anything to do with it. Um, but anyway, so just pray. I believe in a God who my dad is a servant. He's a minister of the gospel. He pastors a lot of churches, three. 
um, and he is what I've learned about the altar. And so I am having a hard time following him this morning because I just am saying, God, my dad's taught me to build altars. And I don't know if maybe that's why God has laid this on my heart because God knows things that I don't. Um, but he has said, build an altar. And so I, I learned how to build altars from my father. So when I was looking back over my memories and thinking, you know, why do I, I'm so much like my dad. I hold on to everything he is. Um, how, what he taught me about God, I am, I believe it. I, I want to do everything to, not just to please God, but to please my father. I want my dad to know that the legacy that you have given me, the altars that you have built, the things that you have said, don't do this, D.B. and I have thought, eh, I don't think it's a big deal to God. I'm held on to. Why? Because my dad did it from an altar. My dad would build little altars and we all gathered around it as children and he let me know. And to this day, I can be it with my father and he'll be weeping and I'll walk into the room and he's weeping, crying, speaking in tongues. To this day, if I go stay with my dad early in the morning, I can hear him and, and that travail and that groaning in the spirit. There's something going on with my siblings and my dad will feel it. And he's on, on his face at an altar. And so he gave me a legacy of an altar of repentance, of saying, I'm sorry, of repenting, of looking at himself and saying, I am the problem, not you, it's me. He taught me at an early age, you're not going to be perfect. Ask forgiveness. Even when I did crazy things to my dad, I can remember I was, I was awful. And um, I remember one time I had said some really mean things. And of course, again, he provoked me to it. See how we do? See how we do? My dad provoked me to that. So therefore, I had a right to act like I did. The Bible is very clear on respecting and honoring your parents. Very clear. Um, I've had people say, well, it doesn't, you know, my, my parents were, you know, they lived back in the dark ages. I need to move beyond that. You know, we're more modern. Well, there's nowhere in the Bible that says that's okay. Nowhere. Nowhere, darling. It says, honor your father and your mother. It doesn't have to say that you have to follow them, that you have to be like them, but it says you must honor them. They are your father and your mother, and then you let God do the rest. You see what God is doing when he says that? Now, I can feel it right now, kick back in the spirit, because you're saying to me, and I know all of you, and all of you think, I know all of you, and most of you were not as privileged as me to have an, and blessed as me, to have an amazing father and mother. Matter of fact, if I was to have you raise your hands, most of you did not. I am very much in the minority. But here's what happens when you follow the word of God. You release to God your parents. And God takes care of mom and dad. You let that go. You see what God is trying to do with the altar? He's trying to get you to take the weight that you have carried from the past and bring it to the altar and lay it down. Why? So that you can be free, free to do what he has called you to do. But when you are carrying the past, what you expected out of someone else and that they let you down, you are literally carrying so much weight that God cannot use you to lift the burdens of anybody else because you're so weighted down with your own, you could never carry anyone else's burdens. You can never step into the ministry that God has called you to step into because you are so busy carrying the burdens that were supposed to elevate you into ministry. I say it all the time. Your past becomes your ministry. I stand here today because of the hell that I went through as a child. And I'll say that lightly. I believe that that was my hell. I am not going to hell. I'm going to heaven. 
So what I went through as a child is the only hell I'm ever going to see. But I am who I am today in ministry because of what I went through yesterday. If I would have carried that and said, God, I just can't do that. I'm too afraid. They would still be winning. Instead, I am rescuing all of the other people that people like them have hurt. Because I've been able to take their burdens. Guess where I take them to? The altar. I grab those burdens and guess where I get them at? The altar. It's not just important for you to come to the altar. It's just as important for you to come with them to the altar. There should never be a service ever that you do not get out of your seat and come to the altar. You know why? Because you may never have another altar to come to. Your next kneeling may be in the throne room. And what about theirs? If you don't come to the altar, they're not going to follow you to the altar. If you lay your burdens on the altar and someone beside of you has burdens that they need to lay on the altar, but you're not showing them how to do it, they're going to carry that with them the rest of their lives. And they're going to waste just as many years as you've wasted. We've got, the altar is the place where we forget about ourselves. The altar is the place where we lay who, what we want and who we are here. And we become him. And I was thinking about that when I'm thinking about my father, like the things that he's given me. I'm like the altars where there's been so many times where we have wept together in the altar. Today, if he was here and then my daddy could be here, which he's going to be eventually, we would be at the altar together. We'd be crying, travailing. We'd be laying hands on the same people. And God would be speaking to me and it would be him and it would be trickling down to me. There's a trickle down of anointing. But the altar is what that, where that represents it. The sacrifice was laid on, on the altar and the blood ran down. You know why I put me on the altar and the things that I want? Why? Because that blood runs down to him. If I hold on to that stuff in my life, and I refuse to change and be different when God's inside digging me around and saying, Dee Dee, I want that, give me that. And I refuse to lay that on the altar. Guess who else is not gonna do it? He's not gonna do it because there's been no blood from my sacrifice trickling down over him. The pride has got to go, people. You cannot go to heaven with pride. Amen. You can't. The haughty spirit you can't. If you cannot crawl to the altar, you cannot crawl to the throne. And if there's things that God is asking you of and you keep holding it back, when you get to heaven, guess what's going to happen? He's going to say, you want in? Oh, no. You're still holding on to so much weight and you're so chained. You're not spotless. I want a spotless bride, one without spot or wrinkle. Why? Because she got it out. Here's what we expect. You want to come to church and you want me or the other leadership to get your spots and wrinkles out of your lives and your relationships. How's that working? Colton, when you come to me and you say, mom, can you iron this shirt? What do I say? Iron it yourself. I say that. <laughs> I do say that. But I do iron it for him. But eventually, Colton is not going to have mom to depend on, and he's going to have to iron his own shirt. Right? 
So if one of you come to me and say, can you get this wrinkle or spot? Or can my, my clothes are really dirty. Can you clean them? I'm going to look at you like, what? Clean them yourself. Well, yeah, if you're going to get to heaven, you're going to be like, God, I have a, he's going to say, I said no spots or wrinkles. I know, but nobody would get them out. And you know what God's going to say? There's an altar. There was water. What did hinder you to be baptized? You're not going to be able to get to heaven and say, oh, but you know what? I know that's in your word, but I cut that scripture out. It didn't, I didn't quite like it. And that's our problem. We want to cut everything out of the word that doesn't apply to us. You're going to explain that someday. Because it applies to us. And you know why? We think it's put there like God's just this awful. No. My dad was super, super strict. Like, I mean crazy strict. I mean like he'd be in jail right now. Strict. If he was, if I was still young. But guess what? Did it hurt me? Did it? Would I be where I am today if my dad was not who he was? No. Because God knew that Dee Dee had pride in her and haughtiness. She was proud. She rebelled against being told what to do. So my dad, God put a dad in my life who said, you're going to do this. And he worked it. And then he put me under another man of God who did the same thing. And then he married me to a husband that did the same thing. Yeah. And I'm like, really, God? I want freedom. But God knows. No. You know why? Because deep down in my heart, I of everything holy. I love the altar. I love him. I love his word. I was thinking about it. What makes me different than those that have been raised like me? I'm in love with it. I love the altar. I know that he chastises me because he loves me. I don't like it. I scream and cry. I get mad and stomp my feet. But it doesn't make me say, you're not my daddy anymore. I'm leaving you. Never. Because it's my connection. It takes the earthly and makes it sacred. The sacrifice is laying deity on the altar. You should never, I say it again, walk out of the sanctuary of God until you have knelt at this altar. And if you can't do it, and if there's something in you right now that's bucking up, that is pride, pride, pride. And the Bible said, pride goeth before destruction. And I've said this before. It's mentioned in the same verse. Pride before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. But I thought they were the same thing. They're not. A haughty spirit is when you do something and you want everybody to look at you and say, I'm awesome. Yep, and then you, I can remember like being all dressed up one time and thinking, oh, I, I got to speak and I just introduced my outfit. I was going to be super cool and I walked up on the stage and I spoke and I'm like, oh my gosh, they responded. This is amazing. And then I tripped off the steps. <laughs> and I literally felt God say to me, uh-huh. You smart. You think you're all that. Now look at you. You don't fall in a haughty spirit before fall. But you can get back up from a fall. I got back up from the fall and walked to my <laughs> They called me Gracie. And I walked to my seat and inside I was like retarded. That's what you get for being proudful. God has a way. I'm literally telling myself that. Okay, God, thanks a lot. You know, you could have done it somewhere a lot less conspicuous and not have 800 ladies watching me fall off a platform. You know, couldn't have been where people know that's what I do. But pride go with before destruction. 
once something is destroyed, is destroyed. You can't get that back. You might put it back together, but it won't look the same. That's why they're mentioned. And you, a lot of us, have pride. And we're wondering why our marriages are struggling, our relationships are struggling. We have pride. We're going to do it our way. And if God says that's not the right way, we disagree. There's a reason why we're acting like this. They deserve it. And God is saying, no, okay, go ahead. You're going to destroy everything you could have because you refuse to put pride on the altar. That is why the altar is so important. Every time you come to service, it makes you get up out of your seat and it says, God, I'm giving everything to you. Me, I, I don't like to eat today. I was awful. I let my temper get the best of me. Am I perfect? And y'all know I'm not perfect. Y'all could probably write down all my imperfections, every one of you, and they all the same because y'all been living with me for forever and you don't have the same ones. If I was to ask you right now, write down five things you wish I would change. Y'all would all write the same five things down. And guess when I come to the altar, guess what I do? I lay the same five things on the altar. You would think by now God would have just sent fire from heaven and burnt them up. But it's a part of who I am. And so he says, go to the altar. Take it to the altar. Go to the altar. So if you're wondering when I'm going to start, stop talking about the altar, never. Until I see you making the altar the priority of your life. Now, I'm going to read this and I'm going to read this every time. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 1 through 12. And I'm not going to read verses 1 through 12. I'm going to read the first part of the first verse in the Message Bible translation. Remember our, because I've had people say, well, the altars were for the Old Testament. We don't really need them in the New Testament because he was our blood sacrifice. And he died on the cross. Well, here we go. Remember our history, friends, and be warned. The same thing that happened to our ancestors could happen to us. In our history books, our positions in the story are parallel. They were simply at the beginning. We are at the end. God does not change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. The character of who he is never changes. He's a God of wrath. Yesterday, he is just as jealous today. It's just, I say it all the time. Now we get 2,000 years to repent. His grace and mercy flows down over us every single time we come to the altar. But those altars were given to us as an example so that we would know how important it is that we build altars in our life. How important it is that we walk there and put the things in our life that aren't like him here. Think about Abraham. Noah built the first altar. But Abraham built altars that he could come back to. They represented things. I look at this and I think, God, this is what I want to be. And maybe it's because as a child, I loved Bible stories. They were so relevant to today that I can literally see Abraham who offered sacrifices all the time on the altar. It was a common occurrence in his life. You know why? Because Isaac knew that they were going to build an altar and to offer a sacrifice. It was not unheard of for him. He was used to daddy going to the altar. And he also knew that there would be a sacrifice laid on that altar, blood would be shed. Why? Because when Isaac gets close, he says, dad, where is the sacrifice? Having absolutely no clue that that 17 year old boy was the sacrifice. He was following his father to the altar. That's why I am telling you, it is so important that we lead by example. 
You have got to go to the altar so that your children will follow you. They must see your tears. They must know that you're so in love with your heavenly father that you don't have a problem kneeling. That your tears of healing will flow over them. That is important. And maybe you don't have children. You're saying, yes, you do. If he has called you to this place, look around you. Every person that doesn't know you, you are to, doesn't know God, you are to disciple them. He called you to be the heavenly father in you. He dwells in me. I am the mother and the father that is missing. It is by my example that I show those around me how to find him. So here comes Isaac following Abraham. And the Bible says that Abraham lays Isaac on the altar. Now here's the crazy thing about Isaac. He was 17 year old. Colton, if I told you that I was about to bind you right now hand and feet and put you on an altar as a sacrifice, he could definitely overpower me. But Isaac went willingly. Why? Because Abraham, through his altars, had shown Isaac the power of an almighty God. And Isaac feared God more than he did his father. And of course, we know the story. Abraham drew back his hand with a knife to kill Isaac. And when he did, an angel stayed him. And God said, you have shown them that you will not withhold anything from me. So I am asking you this morning, what are you withholding from God when you come to the altar? James, what did you think about today's service? Powerful. It's powerful. Yeah, what did you get from it? I need to repent more. Ask God for forgiveness and forgive chain of my life. Amen. Amen. Kayla, what did you get from today's service? What did it mean to you? That God is God and I am not. Amen. Amen. I let him move and him work and not Kayla. Mm. Mm. God's valleys. Amen. Can I get an amen? And the hills. And the hills. Amen. amen.